There we go. We got it in. Uh, thank you for being here. Thank you for listening. Thank you to Steve Berline. Thank you to Diesel. Thank you to Bogus. We appreciate you. Enjoy Monday Night Football. We'll be talking about it tomorrow, among other things, here on CBS Sports Radio. Hey, Jim Rome here. If you want to experience the unmatched flavor of natural live fire grilling, then look no further than the Big Green Egg. Forget the pellets, the propane, the knockoffs. Roll with the best. An authentic Big Green Egg grill backed by a free lifetime warranty. Yes, lifetime. It's that good. Grill, roast, smoke, or bake. It is easy to light. It's simple to use. Shop online for free home delivery at BigGreenEgg.com. That's delivery to your door by a dealer in your community. Go to BigGreenEgg.com. At Simply Safe Home Security, your safety is the only thing that matters. That's why you get live 24 7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day, because every home deserves to be protected. Right now, get 40% off the whole home security system named the best of 2022 by U.S. News and World Report. Visit simplysafe.com slash holiday to save big today. Advanced home security, 24 7 professional monitoring for less than a dollar a day. There's no safe like Simply Safe. This is Mark Washington with Max Sports Performance at Max Fitness. Our facility has reopened and is following all safety protocols. The best thing you can do to strengthen your immune system is, of course, to work out and exercise on a regular basis. I can assist you as your performance coach. You can also enjoy the benefits of a private facility. Avoid the crowds and work out at Max Fitness. Now is the time to get healthy. Max Fitness just off Highway 43 in the old Ace Hardware Building behind Speedway in Greenville. Call me, Mark Washington, 902-4877. So, how does show points work? Well, at Jersey Mike's, six regular number 13s plus three giant number 7s equals a free regular number 13. So, Pepsi and Lay's now earn more points towards free subs. That adds up. Exactly. Download the Jersey Mike's app and earn rewards towards free subs with every sub, Pepsi, and Lay's you purchase. So, how does show points work? Well, at Jersey Mike's, six regular number 13s plus three giant number 7s equals a free regular number 13. So, Pepsi and Lay's now earn more points towards free subs. That adds up. Exactly. Download the Jersey Mike's app and earn rewards towards free subs with every sub, Pepsi, and Lay's you purchase. Beauty Bar Medispa wants to know if you are ready to fall into beauty October 7th through the 14th. All services and products will be on sale. Botox, filler, painless laser hair removal, facials, RF microneedling, rejuvenating laser treatments to treat brown spots, wrinkles, texture, veins, and skin tightening. And now, the only facility in the area to offer non-surgical under-eye fat pad treatments. BeautyBarMediSpa.com, Red Banks Road, Greenville. Go Pirates! Familia on Fire Tower Road in Winterville has a brand new updated menu. Open from 4 to 9 Tuesday through Saturday and 11 to 9 on Sundays, Familia has a variety of pizza combinations and classic Italian dishes that are sure to tackle your taste buds. Enjoy Thirsty Thursdays with $3 drafts with several local brews on tap. And who doesn't love brunch? Familia has Sunday brunch from 11 to 2. Follow Familia on social media for their pizza of the week for just 12 bucks. Visit online at FamiliaNC.com. Familia, that's Italian for family. Be sure to check out David Price Construction for all of your commercial or custom residential renovation and building needs. Run by ECU alumni, David Price Construction specializes in commercial projects, maintenance on facilities, and large-scale residential renovations and additions. Proud to be voted the Remodeler of the Year by the Home Builders Association of Raleigh Wake County in 2018 and Best Business Commercial Remodel Project winner for 2020. David Price Construction, the proud ECU Home Services partner. This is Holt Nailers. I've been eating at Parker's Barbecue since I was a kid. Now, all these years later, I still love to eat at Parker's. In fact, I love it so much, I bring my entire offensive line with me. They protect me, and I look out for them with great food from Parker's Barbecue. So whether you bring the team like me or just your friends and family, the awesome barbecue, chicken, and seafood at Parker's is a win every time. Parker's Barbecue, where they always treat you like family. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep in Greenville is making it easy for you to buy a new truck or Jeep in October. The inventory is back and so are the incentives. It's Ram Power Days at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep and you'll save up to $2,500 plus get 1.9% financing for 60 months on a new Ram truck. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep needs to make way for the 2023 models so October is a great month for you to upgrade into a new Ram or Jeep. Save $2,000 or get 2.9% financing for 60 months on a new 
new Jeep Compass. Save up to $2,500 on the 2022 Jeep Grand Cherokee, the most awarded SUV ever. And you'll need to check out the new 2023 models like the new Jeep Wrangler. Lease the new 2023 Jeep Wrangler Sport for only $3.99 a month. It's Carolina Crash to Dodge Jeep. Across from the Crossville in Greenville. Come see ya. Wrangler lease is 39 months, 10,000 miles per year with $29.99 due at signing. Offers do not include tax, tags, and the $7.99 admin fee. Customers must qualify for all applicable rebates. See dealer for details. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. The following is an exclusive presentation of Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Eastern Carolina's longest-running sports radio show. The Brian Bailey Show is on the air. The Brian Bailey Show is powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Bostick Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, BMS Builders, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft Taft and Hagler, tiebreakers and greenville auto world and now here's brian bailey happy monday everybody on a victory monday for east carolina what a performance by mike houston's pirates on saturday night east carolina knocking off ucf by the final of 34 to 13 it's a short week for the pirates as they pack up and head to provo utah coming up it's going to be cold on friday night as well so we don't have an assistant coach this week. We'll resume that coming up next week. We do, however, have a great show planned for you. Alex Ketty is here. She's the East Carolina Senior Associate Athletic Director for Compliance. She's going to talk about NILs, what you can do, what you can't do, that kind of thing. And later on in the back half of the show, Justin Baer, Director of Marketing at East Carolina, they got a big event coming up, Middengee's Madness, on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, trying to get you ready for the basketball season. So lots of talk today, kind of a different type of show for me, but we're going to have a lot of fun with it, and it continues right after this. BMS Builders is your premier custom builder in eastern North Carolina. With homes in Blackwood, Mills Creek, Dalton's Cove and Farmville, and Belmar and Aiden, they're constantly expanding. Now to Laurel Glen and Sarah's Way, plus the new duplex community at Abigail Trails. BMS Builders can build the home of your dreams. Just ask Dr. Dennis Ross in Greenville or ECU football coach Mike Houston. They built their homes, and they can build yours as well. Call 916-1578 for BMS Builders. This is John Gavigan with the Gavigan Agency. Our top priority is doing what is best for our members. Whether you are buying a new vehicle, a new home, protecting your family with life insurance, or filing a claim, our agency will be there every step of the way. Our goal is to become a trusted advisor for you and your family for all of your personal and commercial insurance needs. Give us a call in Greenville at 756-1400 for a car, home, business, or life insurance quote today. And give us the opportunity to show you the benefits of doing business with someone who cares. Greenville Utilities Electric customers will soon be able to receive text notifications in the event of power outages. Enrollment is automatic, so make sure GUC has your cell phone number by signing into your account at GUC.com, then update the information in your user profile. Want to talk with someone instead? Call 252-752-7166 during business hours. 252-752-7166. Update us so we can update you. Visit GUC.com for more information. Better ingredients, better pizza, better brace yourself because this right here is a Papa John's Papa Bowl. No crust, just piping hot toppings and melty cheese in an oven-baked bowl. Better ingredients, better pizza, now in a bowl, Papa John's. Hey, Pirate fans, brace yourself for the brand new Papa Bowls for only $7.99. The new Papa Bowls are an MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at PapaJohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Pizza. Go Pirates! Temperatures are in the low 30s at 10 a.m., increasing sharply to 75 degrees by 1 p.m., and then dropping into the teens by 10 p.m. So before you go to work, put on some gloves, pack some shorts, and a parka that should cover you for the day. Your heating and cooling take a beating. Guarantee your system is ready when you need it. Call Delcor. Buy a new train system and make no payments until 2023. It's hard to stop a train. With inflation and high gas prices, you don't need another payment. So buy this month and make no payments until 2023. Delcor, the service professionals. It's bow time. So it's game time, and you got a bunch of rabid fans. Dad, 
we're hungry. You head out to fire up burgers and dogs and go from grill master to MVP. Then you realize no, 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 no. you're out of GAS. Yup, out of gas on game day. What do you do? Drop a big bow box on it. Game on. Feed a family of four with eight pieces of chicken, biscuits, fixings, and tea. It's bow time. This is ECU head baseball coach Cliff Godwin, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, providing reliable utility solutions to the Greenville region since 1905. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday. 34-13 East Carolina with the big win the other night over UCF. And as we explained, going to break, uh, it's just a, a short, short week for East Carolina. Mike Houston is wrapping up his press conference as we speak. Usually it's held on Tuesday. Some of the players are getting interviewed right now. But uh, they will get on a plane on Thursday and head to Chile, Provo, Utah to get set for that game Friday night. And it's going to be a, a little nippy Friday night. We, we just looked at the uh, weather forecast, so we're going to have to dress warm. But it's going to be probably in the 20s for game time. Alex Ketty is joining us in the studio. She's the East Carolina Senior Associate AD for Compliance, and we're going to talk NIL. So let's go from the very basics. What is NIL as we introduced Alex Ketty? So NIL is name, image, and likeness. The NCAA loves an acronym. So I know we have national letter of intent. That's NLI, but now we have NIL. There you go. And what it is is that student athletes can profit on their name, image, and likeness, either by doing appearances, speaking engagements, autographs, promoting a business, a service, um, and they can also own their own business and use their student athlete status to promote it. And we've come a long way for, you know, for the student athlete because at one time, you know, these guys are college students, but they are student athletes, but they weren't even allowed to get a job, a legitimate job at some point. Sometimes they couldn't, you know, couldn't back work. Back in the 80s. Back, well, back when I was coming along, yeah. Not that I was a college student athlete, or anything, but, but it kind of progressed from there. And now the name, image, and likeness has kind of just blossomed. And it's, it's really, it's, it's a vital part now of the entire program because, you know, if you're not doing a good job with your NILs with your student athletes, I got news for you. The student athletes are going to look to go somewhere else, aren't they? Yeah, NIL is definitely important. These student athletes can profit off an income that they didn't have before. The normal student body, they were able to be social media influencers or get special discounts because of promotions. Now student athletes can do that, and we are in a great college town for that. Student athletes at ECU are recognizable. They have a following. They have a lot of social media followers, and you see them play on Saturdays, Friday nights, throughout the week as well. And people know them. So I think it is beneficial for a college town atmosphere, just like ECU. And I think when the NIL came out, I don't think it was meant to get student athletes rich, but in some cases, in some universities, and we won't talk about specifics, but your power five conferences, some of your bigger type schools, you hear all kinds of crazy numbers coming out about what they're doing with NIL. But at East Carolina, uh, when you guys look at NIL, does the student athlete come to you and say, hey, this company wants me to, to, to be their spokesman? Is this okay? And you guys look at it and that kind of thing? Yeah. So usually a student athlete, they'll either text, call me, or come meet with me in person in the ward building and say, hey, there's this local business that wants to work with me or maybe a social media company and they would like me to promote their product, their service, and it would usually outline the terms of the agreement. And then we go through to make sure that the NCAA rules are followed. Yep, I am the rule lady. Yeah. And, um, but also in that, we also want to make sure we're protecting them so there, there aren't any scams, that our student athletes are having the best opportunities. So typically what we'll look for is that there's no pay for play as well as no inducements, like a recruiting inducement, in addition to, you know, that they're following our institutional policy and the North Carolina executive order. And I would say, that, not that it's a, a bunch of red tape, but there's got to be some red tape to keep everything in order. Correct. So yeah. the NCAA has uh, their interim policy passed on July 1, 2021, and the red tape from them uh, is there's still no pay for play. So the right. easiest way to outline that for a student athlete or a company or donor is you cannot have a bonus structure so for right. every touchdown you can't give a hundred dollars you can't um, even give a bojangles you know biscuit for a touchdown yeah, right yeah because that's play for pay yeah, yeah exactly but we we understand that a student athlete status is valuable and as we are more successful in the field i mean how about that win on saturday yeah. i mean that was incredible by our offense and defense and 
people were watching and they there's a name out there and they can build their value with success but they can't have any pay for play in that sense have you been surprised when you first you know, they passed july 1st 2021 the evolution so far has that been a little surprising it was extremely fast and yeah. how it how it got there unfortunately is i think congress in different states were pushing so the california bill um, we knew about that in 2020, and they said we're going to pass this NIL law for our California athletes, and it's going down 2023. NCAA, get ready. And then you saw Florida and Georgia, and Florida's law was going into effect July 1, 2021, and they were not stepping back. But the NCAA, they then had to make some decisions, and that's why it passed at like an extremely fast pace. I will say I'm very thankful for our leadership team with an ECU athletics, our student athletes and our legal staff, because we had to learn at an extremely fast pace leading into July 4th weekend. Then the North Carolina executive order, we didn't have one when NIL passed. July 3rd, 2021 is when the North Carolina executive order went into effect. When, when you look at, at just everything that's involved and, and the competition that, that's involved, I mean, they, they, with like the ACC schools, I mean, Mike Houston and the prior coaching staff, they're recruiting against these schools. But in NIL, in, in that NIL world, you know, you're competing against those schools too. Yeah, and that's the, the crazy part of NIL um, is every state law is different or every executive order is different. And we do have, we stay up to date with every state. I will say Alabama's law was extremely restrictive restrictive when it passed, but we've seen that they've enacted a lot of their legislation in their law. I wonder why. Yeah, I wonder why that happened. Alabama, you say. Yeah, I wonder, wonder why they changed a couple of those things. So so take us through, um, you know, the specifics of who all is on your staff and, and how you guys do it on a day-to-day -day basis with NIO. Because i got to imagine that you've got, you're, not that you're putting out fires, but you've got little situations ev everywhere and guys, you know, are, you know, they're, they're marketing themselves. So, so if somebody comes up to them after a game, you have seven, you know, catches and two touchdowns and says, hey, you know, we haven't heard much of you let's get you an nil deal yeah so the student athletes keep us really up to date which is great we have incredible student athletes and our coaches if a student athlete has a question they know they can go right to their coach or me and then typically i'm one of the point the main point people but we also have an nil task force within ecu athletics that helps with trademark and licensing questions marketing questions as well as who our sponsorships are within ecu athletics because there's just different rules and regulations across the institutional policy. And I would say just some of the, the little part that I know about it, you know, with, with Playfly Sports, and before that it was IMG and Learfield, but now it's Playfly Sports. And so they've got, you know, certain things that they've worked out with deals and stuff. And then sometimes they probably overlap, I would think. Yes, we have seen it this year. Um, if you've been at a, a game at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium, I hope you have. They've been yeah. great. So there have been some ads um, where you see a company. Right in Dowdy Ficklin and you recognize us student athletes that never happened before yeah. that didn't exist before we used to tell the previous um sports sponsorship company unfortunately student athletes can't use their name right. image and likeness now they can now they can and, and that means you know when I first heard NIL name image and likeness I was just thinking jerseys like I thought, <laughs> now all of a sudden you can put you know Ailers on a jersey and 12 and put it in a store but but it's it's so much more than that but still that's a big part you know people love jerseys and love to have their favorite player on a jer jersey and i would think you know holton is probably the one that's been able to benefit the most now i i, I meant to say this to start there's some questions i'm going to ask that alex probably can't answer because he's in compliance so if we get down that road she's going to give me that look kick me on the shin and we'll continue on but but i would say holton is probably up here as far as nil deals go just because he's the quarterback at the university and he's been here forever and he was at Conley forever and everybody knows him we could say you've been here forever too. i have been but i don't have an nil deal nobody cares about me nobody has a jersey that says bailey on the back except for me uh -huh. i've got one that says bailey on the back but it wouldn't be worth much but but and that's great for him it, it, i think he's very fortunate that he's able to, to to do that kind of thing in his hometown uh, I can just speak a little bit on Holt, and I would say also what helps him with his market value is he's hometown hero. Right. He's from Greenville. I think that's what makes NIL crazy in itself because the the student athlete that might go to a major city institution, they're going to have to prove themselves, but someone coming 
in a local area, the right. state of North Carolina, they're recognizable. Their families and friends can come to the game, and people already know them and follow them. And when you're in a college town like ECU, it's important to show up, show up for these student athletes, and then they're going to help bring value to your company. Yeah, and, and that's one of the things that you look at when you're when you're selling sponsorships, and, and we hear so much about you know Greenville is, is a great place with a great college town, but there's only so much money out there as far as you know it, it's kind of stretched at times with you know power radios out. Doing stuff other radio stations are doing stuff you know the university is doing stuff but you know with these student athletes now they get a little piece of the pie and that's very important and i think to hit on that specifically it doesn't have to be the million dollar deal obviously that's what every athlete thought on july 1 it's not oprah winfrey on christmas it's not you get a car you get a car you get, you a, get car. a car yeah, you no. get a car it's nil can be benefits it can be a local restaurant providing free meals to a student athlete because he or she posted on social media come eat these burgers at this location it can be something along the lines of a discount if a student athlete promotes a local apparel company or a boutique they get a 50 percent off their next outfit i know those are minimal in a sense but uh but every I mean, little bit helps. I think that's what you, what you get down to, that, that these guys can't go out and have a part-time job because they're so busy. And you, all student-athletes are like that. I used to always think that football was the busiest and everybody else, you know, was kind of busy. But, but, but the more I see, you know, all the sports, it, basically that's what you do. You go to class, you, you practice, you meet, and, and it, it's, it's all encompassed that you're always with your team. They work out. They yeah, wake yeah. Up very early, and they have meetings with academics. They they have very busy schedules, and they're they are so great with their time management plan because we do have a lot of smart student athletes that do well in the classroom too. Alex Ketty, East Carolina Senior Associate AD for Compliance, is our guest. We're going to take a commercial break. If you have a question or a comment, you can go to our Facebook live feed, jot those down, and we'll pass them on to Alex. We'll talk about what you can do if you are a business owner and want to give one of these student athletes to do an NIL deal for you. We'll have that for you coming up in just a bit as well. Alex Ketty is our guest live in the studio, back with more on this Victory Monday for East Carolina after this. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and this is a Pirate Radio Sports Break presented by Ron Ayers Motorsports, Highway 11, north of the airport in Greenville. In the American League Championship Series last night, the Astros beat the Yankees again 6-5, sweeping the four-game series. Jeremy Pena homered for Houston. Harrison Bader homered for New York. The Astros opened the World Series at home Friday night against the Phillies. In the NLCS Championship Series, yes, it was the Phillies going to the World Series after a 4-3 victory over the San Diego Padres, Bryce Harper hit a dramatic two-run home run in the bottom of the eighth inning to propel the Phils into the Fall Classic. Philadelphia wins the series four games to one. The Pirates with back-to-back -back wins leave Thursday for Provo, Utah in a battle with BYU Friday night at 8 o'clock. ECU is coming off its best outing of the year, knocking off UCF Saturday night 34-13. Quarterback Holt Naylor's was 30-36 of 36 for 311 yards and a touchdown. ECU is now 5-3 three and two in the American. This has been a Pirate Radio Sports Break. This is Steven Igo. You've heard from me plenty on Pirate Radio Live and perhaps have read some of my work on hoistthecolors.net. Now get an extension of our in-depth coverage on the Hoist the Colors podcast. From game previews to immediate post-game analysis to emergency podcasts for breaking news, we've got you covered. A cast of guest co-hosts from fans, former coaches, and other writers join me for two podcasts weekly to break down all things ECU athletics. Subscribe to Hoist the Colors now on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Hi, this is Jeff Charles, and welcome inside the booth. Just another example of what have you done for me lately. I'll have some thoughts next. Just like Pepsi, Nyshad Strother from Havelock, born in eastern Carolina. Football season is upon us, and those of us that live in eastern North Carolina know what a special time of year it is. This is Landon Menjis with Menjis Bottling Group. I'm the fourth generation of my family to have the honor of distributing Pepsi Cola products to my neighbors in eastern North Carolina. For over 75 years, my family has taken pride in this great responsibility, and we are proud to have remained locally owned and operated for over seven decades. When you purchase a Pepsi in Eastern North Carolina, you are supporting your community and keeping those dollars right here in your own backyard. Support local, drink local, drink Pepsi, go Pirates. 
Paul Christ was fired this month as the head football coach of the Wisconsin Badgers. His record in Madison, 67 and 26 in seven plus seasons, 41 games over 500. And the 56 year old Madison native and former Badger quarterback gets fired. He won a Cotton Bowl, an Orange Bowl, and three Big Ten West Division titles. In the last three years, a 15 and 10 record, obviously in Madison, that's going to get you axed. The Badgers were nine and four last year. Wisconsin owes him 16 points. $4 million, although the AD who pulled the trigger, Chris McIntosh, says the actual payment will be less. And get this, Wisconsin's Athletics Board gave Chris a five-year contract extension just nine months ago. Next up, Mel Tucker at Michigan State and that insane $95 million contract. The Spartans are losing games. Just saying. Come on back again next time and we'll visit Inside the Booth. This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned, community-powered. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back to our show as we continue on on this Monday. Alex Ketty is joining us. He is the uh, Senior Associate AD for Compliance at East Carolina. Justin Bear is in the building. He'll be on with us in the back half hour to talk about the uh, Menji's Madness. You're going to go to Menji's Madness on Wednesday night? Pretty yeah. big. You know, we, I don't think we've ever done something like that before with the men's program and the women's program and some contests they're going to have. We'll have all the details for you coming up in the back half hour of our show on this Monday. All right, tell us about the NIL Task Force at East Carolina. Now, what do, what do you guys do? How many people are in that task force, and what do you guys do i believe there's about 10 to 15 of us and it's a representative from every department within athletics as well as representatives from the miller school with the ecu and they're extremely important so if you don't know about the miller school it's the miller school of entrepreneurship we have an undergraduate degree which i believe it's one of seven in the entire united states of undergraduate degrees of entrepreneurship and why they're helping us is because they understand how an entrepreneur needs to move through that path to being successful and they have the resources available. So they're in there, we have licensing, we have marketing, we have media relations, we have creative, we have compliance, and we also have it's, uh, sport administrators and we usually have a coach representative. So Jake Kirkendall has been showing up to a lot of those meetings and helping us out as well as Sarah Zolkak with women's basketball. Yeah, and I would say it, it's just really important that everybody is on the same highway, but it's a highway that has potholes all over because you know different things come up and is this is this legal is this right is this because nobody wants to do anything to get in trouble but you know and, and I, as a business owner i would think the same thing like like you know can i do this can i not do this is there a set of rules that you can go by so we have gone over talking points with our coaches our student athletes pyre club and making sure that we just continue to educate on the basics the basic rules so i've hit on it earlier but there's still no pay for play right there, um there can be no recruiting inducements and these are the basics of the ncaa rules there has to be an actual nil activity so a company can't just hand over a wad of cash to right. a student athlete and then the student athlete does nothing the student athlete has to either which you think about that's it, an extra benefit you think about the sec sometimes when you think about that back through the years but we, exactly but when you when you look at something like that so so a pirate club member or something like that can't just say hey man great game and give you know 100 bucks 200 bucks that's that's not allowed but if a Pirate Club member has a business of some sort, and it doesn't have to be money, I think that's one of the key things that you want to bring up too. You know, if, if you have, if you if you own a restaurant, you, you know, you can have these guys you know, represent. You can give them gift cards. You can give them, you know, free meals and that kind of thing. If if they want if represent, you know, your company or your restaurant. Yeah, and we've seen with a lot of the social media type companies and um, global type companies with the student athletes just across the nation, a lot of it's free product. Like they'll promote a sunglasses brand and then they send them sunglasses to promote in the actual pr um, product promotion. And one thing you mentioned about the donor, they can't just hand them a lot of cash. That's a scary comment for a compliance uh, lady, mister. But what they can do now, sign an autograph. An right. autograph is your name. That's value. That's as simple as NIL. I know years ago we've seen situations where student athletes were ineligible for that, but that's changed the game. So you can you can pay a, a person for an autograph. Yes, that's, sir. That's legal. Yes. Do you have to do any paperwork to do that? Yes. They, we would tell the student athlete to do an NIL disclosure form, right. which is internal within our department, okay. and that stays within compliance in the student athlete. And, yeah, an autograph is they could sign a ball. They could sign with the – donor or company wants them to sign a menu if you're a restaurant and you want to frame it, it 
It's as simple as that now. Yeah, well, that's just still, still fascinating. He's just thinking jerseys. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I think jerseys. They got think, TikTok. They got all oh, that, that stuff. That, that was my next question. Now, social media, and I still don't understand. I remember the first time I heard about TikTok, uh, a couple of students were doing a video with Coach Houston. And they wanted to do a TikTok. And I said, Coach, what's a TikTok? And he said, you're asking me? And, and so, and they did some little video, and, and it ran on TikTok. After the it, Memphis game? No, no, that was a while back. That was okay. a long time ago. And, and it's just hard to, you know, what is TikTok? What, I still don't know exactly know what TikTok is. But, so you're saying that a, a student athlete can do a video with a product and put it on TikTok, and that can be part of the NIL deal. Yeah, and, yeah. I mean, sometimes the companies reach out to them because of how many followers they have. Um, that's why we don't know about TikTok because we don't have that type of following. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. But Facebook and Twitter and all that the same way, all that social Instagram. media can help a student athlete and can help in an NIL deal. And that really is the exciting thing with NIL because we have they have these outlets. The normal student body were aren't was already doing this before July one, two thousand twenty one. So now student athletes they can post their fitness videos, their workout videos, and people can send them free products potentially for an NIL opportunity. All right. Now, one of the things you, you told me to bring up is a collective. What is a collective and how do they help student athletes? I didn't tell you to bring that up. No, no, no. It seems but, like you want to no, know. No, full disclosure, I don't know a whole lot about NIL, as you could probably tell with this interview, but I, I've never heard of a collective. Okay. What is a collective? So a collective is a hot topic term within college athletics, and what it is is typically it's fans and donors that come together that put – basically a pool of money um it can either be an llc or a nonprofit, and it's ran by these donors and fans but what they're doing is they're trying to felicitate opportunities for current student athletes um, collectives can be extremely helpful for our student athletes because then it's a pathway and usually these are your biggest donors and fans who are excited to see these student athletes be successful and provide them opportunities and it can be anything like where a company reaches out to them the collective reaches out to me we make sure the rules are followed and the student athletes can go through that process. And I've seen a couple of these in around ten. Now that you say it, I didn't realize that's what it was, a collective, but that's exactly what it is. And that's that's just just donors getting together, putting a pool together, and then, you know, divvying it out as they see fit with the student athletes and all that is is, is totally, totally you know, legal. As long as there's an actual NIL opportunity and then the other rules I've talked about. Yeah, I tell you, it's still... It's a lot. <laughs> it's still crazy. All right, now, th there are some great opportunities depending on what your name is. That helps out. A and some of these are, are hilarious. Leaky Black at North Carolina, and if you're an ACC basketball fan, I know you've heard of him, but he's doing a deal right now with a plumbing company yeah. and he does a commercial where he says, this is leaky, but you won't see any leaky around here. Yeah, no leaks in my house. No leaks in my house because of the plumbing company company that he's advertising for i mean that's that's priceless really and i think people saw marcus to cold and he signed with an hvac company yeah. and he's a wide receiver i believe at nebraska um and he he basically said his house is the, the coldest in the summer so <laughs> hard to say that but yeah i think it's exciting how these student athletes are you know benefiting off of, off of a great name so i guess i'm going to put you on the spot is there anyone on our roster i was trying think to of? think of what would be really good with the with the roster and just uh just coming up with, you know, I think of uh, Keaton Mitchell with Deuce. I think he could do something with, with Deuce. Uh, the Deuce is loose. and you know, I mean, Miles like Berry, his last name. Is That's there true. Any? Well, <laughs> Miles Berry. Yeah, you, Julius you know, Wood, is there a lumber co company? Yeah, I Julius mean. Wood, that's a great idea. There's a bunch of lumber companies. So we're giving you some of these ideas if you're listening. Now, if I'm a business owner, say I do have a lumber company, and, and you know, Julius Wood, he lays the lumber. That's a great deal. You know, we're, we're putting it out there for you. But if I am a business owner, you know, who do I contact to say, hey, I would like to, to offer this NIL deal to someone? Who do I contact and, and what's the road we go down? So the business owner might have a relationship because they're a donor, so they might contact Ryan Robinson or someone okay. in the Pirate Club, and then typically then they'll give them my contact information, and then we'll discuss over the phone or have a meeting if they're local. And sometimes the, the person, they'll just might reach out to the student-athlete directly, which is perfectly fine, and then the student-athlete will then 
let me know and make sure everything's clean and um and then we just go from there but typically i'll be in the process at some point or someone in compliance and we really just want to make sure we protect the student athletes eligibility and i think anyone who is a fan and a donor or right. a local business they, they want to do get, the same right nobody wants to get in any trouble with this yeah. thing they just want to do their best to support yeah. east carolina and support the pirates now now are there things that keep you up at night i mean the things you worry about with the nil deals the things that you know fires I think compliance to there's a lot of things that keep me up that. but i would say specific to nil and i mean this sincerely the one thing that is crazy with nil is this is employment this is soon athletes like you said earlier might have not had jobs right so taxes that's what yeah. keeps me up at night i'm not a cpa i can't be their cpa that's against the rules but i would tell tell you that i just want to make sure our student athletes are doing the right thing with their taxes making sure they're paying attention to that and the great thing we are doing with our task force is we do have tax education seminars we we make sure that they're staying updated on the deadlines but um also what also keeps me up at night is just there's there's scammers out there you know you you get the text or oh, the yeah. calls i just don't want these student athletes getting a weird dm saying here i'm gonna hire you for this i just need your bank account information right. so we try to educate them on on that as well and that's that's got to be difficult too we think a lot of times with scammers we think of the elderly and, and how easy it is and i'm getting close to that, <laughs> that level but when you look at, at at just what can go on with a young person as well i mean if, if a young if somebody calls a young person and they say hey, we want you to do an nil deal and it looks all legit you know i just need your bank account information so i can get your check set up for direct deposit mm -hmm. and then you're thinking like well this guy seems good and but but there are so many scammers out there and with social media it's just easier <clears throat> to do that yeah so we we do try to make sure we're educating on all those other platforms and that's the positive with nil we've created this new importance with financial literacy with taxes so even if a student athlete isn't big into nil they're leaving with this broad knowledge when they leave ECU because we have a great team at ECU and John Gilbert made sure like this was a priority is financial literacy taxes helping them with scam situations as well and, and you know it's almost like you, you look up and you know something changes I think there's going to have to be some kind of legislation with some of the bigger schools and some of the bigger deals that you hear about because that was not the intent of, of this NIL deal, I don't think. I mean, so you, you hear, and I, I won't mention any schools, but you hear certain schools that, that are offering the, every offensive lineman like $100,000 to sign and stuff like that. And that you're not supposed to be able to use it in recruiting. But but I you're in the media, so, but don't believe everything you read on the internet. But I, you're right. <laughs> but, you're right. But I would say that. But you've heard stories like that too. The crazy thing with NIL, and I mentioned it earlier, is that every state law is different right now. Um, they or executive order, and I think that's what needs to change. I would say if we can create some federal legislation, which is way above my head, and I know there is discussions with that, but if we can get some consistency, so there's uniformity on reporting and what should be done, and then. We go from there. Someone sent in this uh, Marlin gun would be a good one for some. It, but but for a gun, you'd have to go like a Western shop or something that wouldn't be you know taken in a bad context. But but something like that would be kind of cute, you know. With Marlin gun, he's a freshman. We we'll get him a nil deal with a uh, cowboy shop somewhere. That'd there you be, go. That'd be a lot of fun. Anything else you want to fill us in on nil deal before we get you out of here? Because you've been very very informative. I mean, it's still there's so much to this whole thing, and really, it's a great opportunity because. If you're in the public and you have a business, you can help East Carolina University in so many ways, but this is a key way you can help them because they've got to have good NIL deals in their recruiting process as they get people here. If, if East Carolina is known, well, their NIL deals aren't that good, then that's going to hurt you in recruiting. Whether or not recruiting is supposed to be a part of it, that is going to be a part of it. So, yeah, no recruiting inducements. Right. However, I would say it's important that NIL is a is available for our current student athletes. They are smart, successful young men and women who I know would do a great job promoting any product or service or business. And they they want to give back to the community and they want to do the right thing. And if this is an opportunity where they can make some passive income or as simple as tweeting it out to, let's just say 30,000 followers and fans that maybe, hey, I ate at this burger joint, you should too. 
who knows? That might increase your sales at your restaurant. And I had a chance to talk to the men's basketball team and the women's basketball team, kind of like a media workshop type deal. And I told them, you know, when you do those interviews, you're basically, you know, kind of trying out for an NIL deal. Because when people see you on TV and they say, hey, that, that was a great interview. That was that was very well you know, said. It was, you know, even after a tough game, if you sit in front of that, the cameras are on you, lights are on you, you say, you know, it, it, it was the last shot of the game. I missed it. You know, I'll take it again next next time and they say man that's a great attitude i'd like to have this guy you know with my company oh yeah nil definitely involves some work i tell these two athletes all the time you go you gotta go to class you gotta go to practice then nil like yeah. let's make sure you stay eligible in the classroom let's be successful on the field the court the pool whatever it might be but then if you can find the time and you are willing to work it it's an opportunity available, yeah. which is great. And it, I'm excited for our athletes that are embracing this space. And I'm excited for our donors and fans and businesses and our community to really embrace this space, too. And hopefully somebody out there right now is watching and they're saying, hey, I, I like what they're saying. Let's get an NIL deal and give them a call. And this is for all student athletes. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can you can get someone from the soccer team. You can get someone from the basketball team. I mean, you can get you know, I mean, male. Women's female. soccer just qualified. They're That's going to right. postseason. They're and, going to the postseason. How yeah, about that? having a great great season and we're gearing up for basketball um so you you see the waves of nil i will say obviously baseball i was yeah. successful this last spring always so. successful with cliff godwin yeah. i mean you know, it's some of those stats are, are mind-boggling the only teams that have gone you know four straight regionals and you know just it's just uh, it, the job that they do over there is incredible and and those those baseball players i mean they they would be great and, and you feel you feel bad for the jake agnos of the world and stuff the guys that came along that would have been been great how about the shane carden and justin oh, yeah. hardy justin I mean, hardy it, shane carden yeah. i can see them having some opportunities I, I back in the too. day yeah. but at that time it was a violation yeah. so that's why the this it is great that it passed and i think and people are willing to do it the right way and our student athletes are willing to make sure that you know there's there's a lot of responsibility with nil so with that being said i think um I hope ECU and I hope anyone listening, they, they learned something today as well. I hope so, too. Alex, thanks so much for your time. Appreciate you coming over. And we will see you in Utah coming up yes. for the big game, East Carolina and BYU. All right, we're going to take a break. Justin Bear is in the building. He's going to join us next. We've got Menji's Madness coming up on Wednesday night. We'll preview that for you coming up next here on the Brian Bailey. Seared Chop House is Greenville's only true chop house. We're open seven days a week. Seared combines a remarkable menu with an unrivaled atmosphere. Lunch or dinner at Seared is a quality driven experience where we highlight a thoughtful approach to locally sourced ingredients and hearty flavor rich cuisine. We're firing up the grill at Seared, Greenville's only true chop house located on Fire Tower Road at Bells Fork. Come see us at Seared seven days a week. Before you hit the road this travel season, be sure to get your tires inspected by the Tire Guys at Greenville Auto World. The Greenville Auto World service team sells all the top brands and economy tires if you need a new set. Need an oil change, state inspection, or AC repair? Greenville Auto World can work on any type of vehicle, and the monthly oil change special is only $29.99. Make an appointment now by calling 364-8730. For award-winning service, trust Greenville Auto World. I'm Michael Vaughn with East Coast Grading and Utilities. Many of you know my dad, David Vaughn, and his work in putting in subdivisions all over Pirate Nation. But East Coast Grading and Utilities is not just for those type of big jobs. We're here for the homeowners, whether it's concrete, driveways, hauling rock or sand, whatever you need, East Coast Grading and Utilities can get the job done. Call us at 252-531-7494 or check us out on Facebook at East Coast Grading and Utilities. The Rick House is Eastern North Carolina's premier American-style restaurant and bourbon bar with daily specials. And here's the lineup. Mondays feature $7 margaritas and half-price appetizers. Tuesday is stuffed seafood night. Wednesday is date night. Thursday is roasted smoked lamb chop night. Fridays is prime rib night. And Saturday is Italian night and is also Fred and Wilma night with our 36-ounce bone-in tomahawk steak just like the Flintstones. And on Sunday, it's our legendary brunch from 10 to 2. The Rick House, American provisions and spirits 710 Red Banks Road beside the bowling alley in Greenville. 
Fall isn't just for football, it's a great time for something new to wear as well. And Russell's Clothing in downtown Washington has everything you need for game day as well as any other day for men and women. Whether it's dress, casual, or even a formal occasion, Russell's has you covered. Russell's has served Eastern North Carolina and beyond for 39 years with quality clothing and personal service. We are proud supporters of BCU Athletics and invite the Pirate Nation to shop Russell's in downtown Washington, the home of Russell's Clothing. Go Pirates! Revive Health and Wellness of Greenville is here to enhance your health, assist you with weight loss goals, improve your overall feeling of well-being, elevate your natural beauty, and to give you the confidence that you need and deserve. Locally owned and operated by Samantha Casper, Revive Health and Wellness has a new location and is ready to serve you. Visit them at 2459 Emerald Place in Greenville. Call today to set up an appointment at 350-1805 or go online at revivehealthwellness.org. Work. This is Jeremy Lewis, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities. Community-owned utilities mean local control, low rates, and high reliability. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back on this Monday as we continue on here on the Brian Bailey Show. Pirates win 34-13 on Saturday night. The Pirates at 5-3, and three, one win away from bowl eligibility for a second straight year. Justin Bear from the, the marketing department at East Carolina. He's the director of marketing at ECU. He joins us, and we've got a big event coming up in basketball, the uh, Menji's Madness event. Not Midnight Madness. We're going to do it at 7 o'clock, but it's Menji's Madness coming up on Wednesday. Talk about the idea, Justin, a little bit. Where did it come from? So it's something we've kind of toss back and forth for years about doing something preseason for basketball and then um, both basketball staffs kind of expressed interest in doing something so we said let's make it happen so it kind of just a few weeks ago kind of came out of came out of the blue but we've it's something we've thought about for for a while it's free to the public everybody can yeah, come out free yeah we're going to be kind of student focused but you know fans kids everybody it's going to be family friendly it'll be Open anybody and everybody. Okay. Anybody can sit anywhere they want. Just kind of come in. Yeah, we're gonna try to. to we're gonna try to keep everybody in the lower bowl. Um, okay. If we get if we get too many, we'll start moving some people into the upper bowl. But we're trying to keep everybody kind of down close, interactive. Uh, close to the court. So. Basketball is just around the corner. I'll tell you what. It's, it's crazy, boy, isn't it? <laughs> it all flies by. I'm yeah. telling you, I always say this. Once August 1st hits and, and football starts, it kind of just goes. And next thing you know, it's Thanksgiving. And, and all of a sudden, yeah. we're almost there for Thanksgiving and college basketball getting set to start. All right. As part of the Menji's Madness, it's, it's going to be a fun event. Uh, you're going to have lots of contests. So so one of the contests you're going to have early on is going to be a men's player or women's player and someone from the crowd. Is that going to be probably a student? Yeah, we're going to kind of just do it like we normally do for any contestants in game we'll kind of have our interns or somebody go around and pick some contestants so um you know we're going to try to keep it open keep it interactive so all right the first the first event each team will start with a layup and then one member will have to go to the uh next shot a Mm three-pointer all three members have to attempt to make a half court shot yeah yeah, it's something uh, they used to do in the NBA All-Star game a few years ago, and it used to be uh, NBA player, WNBA player, and a legend. So we kind okay. of just took that idea and kind of kind of tweaked it into a fan shot. And I think in the old way, the NBA All-Star game, they used to keep shooting half-court shots until they made, we're going to put a put a 30-second cap on there because we, we don't want to be there all night. So. And you're going you're gonna, to you're time it, so whoever comes up with the shots in the least amount of time. Yeah, so whatever uh, whatever team wins, that fan will win, will win a prize. Okay, so we'll have well, that going on. Now, one of the big things you're going to have going on are half-court shot attempts for $1,000 scholarships. And yeah. you're going to draw people out to, to Yeah, do so we'll just randomly, when, when they walk in, students will be able to sign their name, um, put it into a, a prize box, and we're just going to we'll pull them right there. And so, you know, you'll, uh, you'll say a name, and they're going to come down. they got a chance to make a half-court shot for $1,000. You got the ECU dance team. Before that, the drum line will, will perform a little bit, and then the dance team's going to come out and kind of perform. So you can kind of get the idea. It's kind of a fun thing. It's not going to take all night. It's going to take. I think you've got it documented for about an hour. An hour is what we're shooting for. Um, rough estimate. I mean, it might be a little bit longer, might be a little yeah. bit shorter, but we're trying to keep it in that one hour. Um, you know, at that point, once it kind of gets longer than that, it, it becomes a long night. But, you know, we'll get everything in and out in hopefully an hour. Second competition of the night, three-point contest. The old three-point contest. Three-point contest is back. Same same type deal, right? Yeah. yeah. I see Clip and Chandler shooting back in the back. We might need to get them in, in, involved. <laughs> I didn't know you were building a new coliseum with all those bricks they would uh, throw yeah, up. Yeah, you know. 
That would be good. Come on, you can you can join in if you want. You can you can turn your mic on. Since y'all were late coming back from the break, yeah, there you go. Uh, all right, so three point contest, same type deal. You'll have somebody from the crowd as yep. well, and yep. you'll have teams. How many teams will you have for that? We're gonna, we're gonna have three teams. So we'll have well three men's players, three men's players, uh, three women's players compete, and then they'll each get um, get a fan okay. on their team as well. Each get a fan, so that'll be the, the second big contest as far as that goes. You have prizes too. What kind of yeah, prizes we're, do you have? Uh, we're. I think we're gonna do a signed basketball from Coach Schwartz and Coach McNeil. We might find some other other items we have in our in our storage closet but we'll do a little prize pack for fans and then you're going to have another half court shot for a couple of fans and yeah. that's that's always you know because you, you'd be surprised i think somebody's going to make one what do you think i, I hope somebody <laughs> makes one I, I would actually really hope all five of them make it. right that would be i mean what kind of story would that be but if we get one i think that'd be a, a cool cool experience for everybody so do they shoot with a men's basketball or a women's i'm going to give them the choice whatever that's a good whatever idea they want well that's, so. that's a good idea all right and then the, the uh the last contest is the dunk contest. Yes. So you're going to pick fans out to try to dunk? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Again, we're going to, Clip's going to get out there again and rock the baby on yeah. somebody. He's going to rock the baby, all right. <laughs> uh, trampoline? Yeah. 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 We'll, we'll bring out Slam Ball. We're going to transform Minji's. Oh, trampoline. That would yeah, be so, good. Yeah, so there'll be probably three to five men's players that will compete in a dunk contest. We'll give them a couple couple chances out there to do something. Back in the day, way before all of your guys' times. I actually way, know what you're going to show. I know. Brian Meador showed me the video yeah. earlier. We had two cameras out there that night for whatever reason, and Blue Edwards, Theodore Blue Edwards, went up in a slam dunk competition and just shattered the backboard. I still have a piece of that glass in my desk drawer at Channel 9, but he sure did. I think it's still on YouTube. Isn't it on YouTube? Uh, I don't know if it's on YouTube, but I know Brian brought it up, but he showed me the video of Blue breaking the backboard yeah, earlier. So. That's a good video. Yeah, it's it a good video. That was cool. He, he comes sliding through, and, and it was uh, it was amazing stuff. It was it was really it was a lot of fun. And that was that was kind of just a uh, a thing they were having, kind of a uh, just a, a little mini event, I guess you could yeah. call it. But man, he slammed it home, and it was we did it for the coaches. That's why we had the two cameras out. But that was a lot of fun. And then the last thing you're going to do for the Minji's Madness is going to be a, a thing from Jimmy John's, and it gives yeah. everybody a chance to win a little Jimmy John's. Yeah. So we're gonna we're gonna hopefully get all the coaches uh, from both staffs out there. We're gonna give them one minute. If they can, if one of them makes a half court shot, everybody in attendance will go home for with something from Jimmy John's. So. Right, you gonna have have one side like the the women's coaches shoot at one basket, the men's coaches shoot at another I think, basket. I think we're just gonna get them in one line. One um, oh, one line. One line and just keep letting them rapid fire go through, and they got one minute, and if you know one of them makes it, you so, know. So they're all shooting at the same basket. Everybody's shooting the same basket. We'll give a little get a little excitement. Hopefully somebody makes one. Yeah, and everybody goes home with a gift from Jimmy John's if yeah. that happens. Yes. So good. Well, there you go. All right. That sounds hey, like Bailey. a good event. Yep. There's a uh, five-second video on YouTube of Blue Edward shattering the backboard. It has over 85,000 views. Wow. How about that? Yeah. yeah. It's five seconds? The the one I yeah the one I put up is five. It's just him dunking backboard down in the video. Oh, man. We'll have to look for that at the uh, station. Cause, and, and the late Kevin O'Brien knows exactly where that video is located. But uh, he took that with him when he uh, tragically passed away about a year, year and a half ago, maybe two years ago now. But uh, he knows where all that video is. And somewhere he's looking down on us and saying, well, <laughs> you guys you guys should have saved that video. I had it for a long, long time. But I'm not quite sure where it's at right now. But that was that was priceless stuff. I mean, that was that was the old Minji's Coliseum. And, and we were looking at some video earlier today and, and uh me was hey you know is this minji's i was like nah it's not minji's but it was yeah. minji's yeah it's, it's just it's, it's minji's has changed so much and uh with the facelifts that it, it's had anything else for minji's madness uh, uh gates will open at 6 30 um we're giving away t-shirts to the first thousand fans through the gates so you show up you'll probably get a t-shirt and then uh pizza's providing pizza for the first hundred hundred fans through so if you're if you get there right at 6 30 you might get Dinner and a t-shirt. Man, dinner and a t-shirt. <laughs> that sounds like date night to me, yeah. Cliff. What do you think? I'm in. Yeah. I'll, I'll be there. I I'm think, fired up. Yeah, I'm fired up, too. That'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. So that'll be good. Minji's Madness, 7 o'clock on Wednesday night, featuring the men's and women's basketball teams at East Carolina as they get set for the 2022-23 uh, basketball season. All right, we've got Justin Bear with us. He's director of marketing at East Carolina. Let's talk about some of the other things you guys have been able to do. Let's talk about football a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you guys have a stripe the stadium deal. We had that the second time i think in history i think both times it worked really really well yeah. uh you've had the gold out you've had the blackout is, is there one that people don't like as much as the others uh generally i hear gold is the one that people don't like and generally it's because people say they don't look good in gold um yeah. but 
I think, it, and I think it's one of those things. It's the color that people probably have the least of. I think so too. So yeah. I mean, you know, everybody's got purple, and we start talking about black because you, know, you start getting jackets and shirts right. and whatever that you have that are black. So. Gold is usually the toughest one for us, um, but, you know, it is one of our two primary colors. So mm. It is, and it, and it is the one that I think most people have the least amount of stuff. Most everybody has all kinds of purple, and like you said, with the black, a lot of people have, and Coach Houston wears a lot of black with mm -hmm. his purple. I mean, yeah. he, he really likes that look. I like that look, but uh, I thought the blackout was, was really cool the other night. That was, yeah, that was I thought it was great. I thought, I mean, the crowd showed up, and, you know, I would say, 80 90 percent of that crowd was wearing black i mean yeah. i saw a ton of black from where i was sitting but um yeah i mean usually black is the students love the black one the best um, but the fans have seemed to really get behind it too so i didn't see anyone in the skeleton deal that i've seen before but jill jelnick who's now at uh, the uh a nashville tv station doing sports but she played softball at east carolina her and some of the softball girls one year for a blackout got the skeleton look and and i think east carolina still uses that oh yeah i see that picture all oh the yeah time. it's yeah. great it yeah. had such a great look for those girls yeah and how they, they they had their faces all painted mm -hmm. up and they did everything with yep. the blackout and that was uh that was really really cool but uh what have you got for the last home game anything for the last home game so we are gonna let fans pick whatever color that they want to wear to the last game we're not doing anything color wise it'll be senior day so um you know we'll be honoring all of them uh pre-game but uh nothing in terms of color anything like but you're that not, you're not gonna have them vote or anything it's just no just whatever wear. whatever color if you want to wear purple you can wear purple if you want to wear gold black whatever you want you can wear. Yeah, it's going to be. Uh, it may be a little, little, little nippy that late in November. So yeah, yeah maybe uh, bundled up a little bit. But uh, that'll be fun to do. A anything uh, on the horizon for basketball as basketball season starts? So there's some promotions you guys are going to do with that. Yeah, we're uh, early on. We're going to start. Uh, we're going to focus on getting the students out there, uh, supporting Coach Schwartz. Um, you know, he's really big on on the environment, and he he knows that the students can really make an impact on that. So. Uh, for the first game, we're actually going to give away a thousand uh, T-shirts to students for that game. So um, we're going to try early on to definitely get some get some push for the the students. I mean, obviously, we want the general fan base to show up as well, but um, we'll be a little bit student focused early on, uh, getting people out there, getting getting them acclimated to the Coach Schwartz era. And and really, I think everybody fan wise just has to be patient as far as basketball goes because we've all the ones of us that have been here for so long understand that it's a it's a really really difficult job. It's a, it's difficult to build a program, uh, as, as some coaches say. You have to you have to get old and stay old, mm -hmm. and, and then when you have to start from scratch, like Coach Schwartz is doing. I mean, yeah. you know, he said the other day in his press conference, "I really don't have an idea of wins and losses, but I just want to put." And I think I really think the Pirates fans if they see a really competitive defensive minded team which i think you're going to see with coach Schwartz, yeah. i think they'll be you know happy to come out and watch yeah i mean i definitely think you know i think the support that the fans can give i think definitely helps at the end of the day with wins and losses i mean especially early in the season and with a young team if they they feel like they have that that support behind them that really does help the team and and you know it helps in recruiting too um you know there's no doubt that how many people the football recruits see on Saturday afternoons and Saturday evenings in Dottie Ficklin Stadium has an impact on recruiting. So, you know, if fans can show up, that definitely helps the, the Coach Schwartz staff uh, get some players and, and recruits in here. You know, we had Alex on a little while ago talking about NIL deals. Do you guys in marketing, does that ever, you know, come into your neighborhood or anything or in your area? Uh, I'm also part of the NIL task force. Are you? I kind of, yeah, because um, I also see oversee licensing, so that kind of gets in, in, into some of that stuff. But... Um, you know, from our side, we're not really heavily involved. It's more of a support role as opposed to, you know, we're not going out and kind of helping these kids find anything or funneling anything to them. A lot of our stuff is more on the just supporting, you know, Alex and, and the people who are kind of on the boots on the ground on that stuff. And one thing we really didn't talk about, but you'll know the answer to this, but if a student athlete is, say, he's doing a commercial for a restaurant, you know, he can use his name, image, and likeness, but can he use the pirate logo at all? Uh, no, right. they can't. Yeah, it's uh, there is ways you can, um, you know, if for example UBE decided to do T-shirts, they can, you know, get licensed product and pay royalties on it. But no, if a, uh, you know, if Holton and all of Holton's commercials, he can't wear the ECU pirate marks or anything yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just one of those. If but if it's a sponsor that works directly with East Carolina, if it's the official soft drink yeah. or the official pizza or something like that. It, there's kind it's, of a, it's all it's kind of a gray area to be right. honest so yeah that's what i was thinking as well all right when you look at, at ideas for the future baseball ideas i mean have you guys met on that yet is that still uh we've i mean we've had some initial conversations um still kind of waiting on a finalized schedule to kind of start laying out kind of our theme games and things like that but 
Um, you know, baseball actually has big, you know, they're, they have Saturday, they're playing UVA at home here for their fall schedule and then purple gold world series the following weekend. So, um, that's coming right around the corner. So kind of been focusing on getting, getting some promotion for that, making sure that those, um, operate, they'll kind of feel a little bit like a regular baseball game, but, um, we haven't gotten too deep into the baseball planning. Um, that is right around the corner though. Kind of the next couple of weeks, we'll definitely start putting boots on the ground on that. Yeah. I'm glad you brought that up because, uh, Pirates played at Clemson this past weekend Yes, they did, and then they're playing Virginia. So, uh, obviously Cliff Godwin and company are going to go after the very best they can go after. Yeah. And uh, that's how you, you know, iron sharpens iron, that kind of thing and playing with the best in the country. So, uh, Pirates in Virginia, and that's always a cool matchup because we've had Virginia in regionals before mm-hmm. and we've, we've, we, you know, yeah, just this past year we had them in a regional. Right. And we've got, you know, the re- relationship with Coach Mack and with Cliff and mm-hmm. uh, just the things that continue on between those two programs. One of the greatest wins in East Carolina baseball history was in Charlottesville yeah. that year when yeah. the Pirates came up with that regional win. So that's always a lot of fun as well. And I know, you know, baseball is kind of – baseball has its own set of – fans yeah I mean, they really are oh, yeah. their own you know they, they got the jungle crowd and you mm-hmm. got the crowd in the in the bowl of the but, stadium yeah. and but but they support them i mean they, they go out whether it's you know 30 degrees or or 90 yeah degrees. there's been they're some games there. i've walked through that stadium and i'm like it is way too cold for y'all oh, to be man. out here and they're you know they're out there they're supporting it they're enter- they're you know they're into the game too it's not like they're just sitting there i mean they're into every pitch and every at bat so yeah, I always say this about baseball season because we start in February and it's kind of mm-hmm. like you know we we cheat the end of winter because yeah. I always think that that spring, even though it's cold. I mean, I remember I think it was probably three or four years ago now when UNC came and it was on a Friday night in February and it was eighty degrees outside. And I think on Sunday they played again at home and it was like forty degrees. So yeah. you mean you know it's just such a wild card with February and what you're going to get weather wise, but. Uh, it's always it's always interesting. Yeah, you just never know what you're going to get when you get to baseball season. But we're looking forward to some of that. Justin Bear, Director of Marketing in East Carolina, live in the studio with us right now. We will take a commercial break. We'll come back. We'll wrap things up with Justin. Wrap things up on this edition of the Brian Bailey Show right after this. Dear past, present, and future football watchers, you know why we're here. The football season is back! Woo! That means those pregame barbecues with an ice-cold Pepsi? Totally back! Your perfectly placed football watching corner seat, back and comfy as ever. 18 Sundays of touchdown scoring, Hail Mary throwing, ice-cold Pepsi flowing football action? You better believe it's back! And since that's too amazing to miss a single second's worth, Pepsi is officially giving you permission to always put football first. And when we say always, we mean always. Like when your lawn is looking less like a lawn and more like a jungle. If the game's on, then the lawnmower ain't. And those gutters you haven't cleaned? Today is not their day. Or maybe those in-laws are back in town. Well, better hope they're football fans because your Sunday is completely booked. Long story short, crack open a Pepsi and don't let anything get between you and your football watching. With love, Pepsi, made for football watching. Ah, that's what I like. The best burgers around. Everyone loves a thick, juicy, and fresh burger. Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. All anniversaries are special, but because it's Bostick Sug Furniture's 85th anniversary extravaganza, we packed a lot into our big extravaganza with not one, not two, but three ways to save. Extra 10% off, plus 1937 local delivery, plus six months special financing on all in-stock and custom orders. Change your mattress, change your life, and get 48 months special financing during the big 85th anniversary extravaganza on now at Bostick Sug Furniture. The Angus Grill is your premier spot for the best burgers, cheesesteaks, and brisket sandwiches around. Join us for our unmatched variety of burger combinations. From the mushroom bacon Swiss burger to the jalapeno popper burger to the original Angus Classic. Pair that burger with our amazing onion rings, tots, fries, or sweet potato fries. Angus Grill, with four amazing locations in eastern North Carolina, including Winterville near Pitt Community College, on Jarvis Street in Uptown Greenville, and on Statensburg Road near the hospital. It's the best burger around, guaranteed. Hey, Pirate Nation, this is Brian Buck with Buck Insurance Agency. This season, when you attend your favorite sporting event, take the game day pledge. If your team is playing, win or lose, 
Support your team to the end of the game. When you leave early, you risk missing your favorite athlete making the play of their career. When our family buys a ticket, we always plan to stay to the very end. Take the game day pledge this season with Buck Insurance Agency. Play to the end, stay to the end. This is ECU assistant football coach Roy Tesh, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, working for our community, not for shareholders. Now, back to the show. All right, welcome back as we wrap things up on this edition of The Brian Bailey Show. we got a big night, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, Minji's Coliseum, a little Minji's Madness. And as we're wrapping things up, let's talk about that just to reiterate the fact that it's going to be a fun night. You know, you come out, you get to see both basketball coaches. We're going to have little, little interviews with them on the court, uh, get a taste of what pirate basketball for the men and for the ladies is going to be like this year. And I'm looking forward to it. I appreciate the fact that you guys asked me to host. And I think it's going to be be a good time and uh, with the contests and everything yeah. and with the prizes up for grabs. And it's just something just to get everybody excited about basketball. Yeah, that's really what we're focused on is trying to make it as fun and interactive as possible. You know, I've seen a lot of these kind of midnight Minji's Madness types of events and like they'll scrimmage at the end or whatever and it's like at the end of the day like that gets kind of boring it's yeah. kind of so we're trying to keep it short kind of keep it fun um, interactive you know have fun as much as we can with it yeah, it's funny you say that about scrimmages because I've been to a lot of basketball scrimmages and people say how do they look I'm like I have no idea, idea. Yeah. same thing with football scrimmages yeah I mean the purple gold scrimmage every year you know <laughs> the pigs can pick guys like you know we're playing against each other what? so who yeah. knows how good we really what? are what did we see is, yeah. is our offense really good or is our defense bad That's what right. you know what I mean so and that's what the coaches see when they get the yeah. tape out and they try to figure that thing out. Short week for East Carolina's Pirates. Pirates play BYU 8 o'clock Eastern time, 6 o'clock Mountain time uh, out in Provo, Utah. The weather's expected to be a little nippy that night. Cool. Uh, I've seen lows as m- low as 14 degrees. You got your jacket ready? Uh, I got, I'm going to find something <laughs> to take. I can tell you that. I got so cold at Navy. I was telling Coach Houston that today. I got so cold at Navy last year that because that's off the water and we were just I didn't dress for it. And my teeth were chattering deep. During the coaching show, as I was asking him questions, my teeth were chattering because it was so cold. So I can't imagine what uh, this is going to be. And, and we were talking about the coldest we've ever been had to be in the Liberty Bowl that year when uh, Arkansas and East Carolina played in Memphis. And that was truly, uh, I, I always say that Terry Holland looked like he was frozen standing in the corner uh, as the athletic director. And it looked like he was absolutely frozen. But uh, that was one of the coldest. But hopefully it won't be as cold coming up in Pro Bowl. Hopefully the Pirates will stay hot because the Pirates have won two in a row. And you got to say, Man, that was their best performance by far against UCF. That yeah, was, I mean, that's that one of the impressive. best I've. I mean, I've been here for five years now, and that's. I mean, that's as good as a performance I've seen in my time here. I mean, it was, and it wasn't anything fluky about it. They just no. dominated the Knights yeah. of Central Florida and UCF. You know, history tells the story year in and year out. They're one of the top two, or three teams in the Americans. So that yeah. was a big win for Mike Houston, maybe a signature type win for Mike Houston and his program. And they look to make it three in a row coming up this week against BYU. You want to thank Justin Bear for being with us today. Appreciate yeah. your time. Looking thank forward you to for working with me. you coming up on Wednesday night. Also, want to thank Alex Keddy. She was the senior, is the senior associate agent for compliance at East Carolina Talking NIL. So we appreciate her time as well on this Monday. We'll see you back here next Monday on The Brian Bailey Show. This has been The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities and also brought to you by Angus Grill, Boston Sug Furniture, Bojangles, East Coast Grady, Papa John's, Pepsi, The Rick House, Greenville Utilities, BMS Builders, Seared Chop House, The Gavigan Agency, Taft Taft and Hagelin, Tiebreakers, and Greenville Auto World. Join us next week for another edition of The Brian Bailey Show, right here on Pirate Radio. This is Pirate Radio.